Thank you so much for joining us on The Dwelling Show. I'm your host, Ola Dantes. I've got the amazing Zach Booth with us today. Hey, Zach, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. No, my absolute pleasure. You have a fascinating story, you know, starting in, you know, window cleaning, you have a window cleaning business. Now you're crushing in real estate, wholesaling. So can you just kind of tell um, our listeners a little bit more about, you know, who you are, um, kind of what you've been doing and what you've been doing lately, actually? Yeah, so I'm a real estate investor. I'm based here in Utah. Uh, we're currently opening another market as well. Um, but you know, I, I got into real estate because I was a little burnt out from washing windows, right? My shoulder was popping. I was having issues with my rotator cuff. It was a business I started when I was 17. It was great. Um, it provided for my family. Um, I had done it for nearly a decade. And, uh, but it, you know, I was, I was risking my life a lot of the times. Literally, I was doing crazy stuff. Um, and I, I got a notification just the other day. I'm up on this flagpole clear up in the air. I climbed this flagpole to, to feed the, the rope through the, you know, the pulley system for a measly 50 bucks. Right. And I posted on Facebook as a joke, like, Hey, I hope my mom doesn't see this. And I look back now and it's like, what were you doing? You know? <laughs> and it, it's, it's just, uh, it's funny, but it's not, you know, it was so painful. I was, I was, like I said, I was doing okay. I ended up on a history channel because of washing windows. One of my YouTube videos went viral. I have like 8 million views on one of them. And like, I did well for a window cleaner, but I was burnt out, right? I was, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I had some debt and I wanted something different. I wasn't fulfilled. It was just, uh, it was tough. And maybe a lot of people have been there, you know, like they're, they're in a business they hate or they're doing something they're just not excited about. And uh, that's kind of where I was. And so that's what pushed me into real estate in the first place. Wow. So push, push you, it did. And, you know, kind of just tell us a little bit of how you got started. Like, what did you actually do from kind of feeling, you know, the pain in your hands, just thinking, well, I can't really keep doing this. What was that first thing that you did? Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't really have any wealthy family. I grew up pretty freaking poor, you know, like, um, I didn't, I didn't have the resources. I don't have a rich uncle. I didn't, I didn't know much about anything. So I did what most people have to do, which is YouTube and podcasts. And, and while I was washing windows, you know, I have my headphones in, I'm just listening. I'm trying to just find something. And I learned about a, a, a mentor that taught people how to do creative real estate deals, no money out of pocket, things like wholesaling, what I do now. And I paid that first mentor $10,000 and I spent thousands more on marketing and I never got a lead, never even got a lead, not a motivated seller, not a single lead. And I was so discouraged. I was so angry. And I remember like calling the mentor, I want my money back. He wouldn't give me my, my money back. And I just felt like, I felt like all gurus were this, these snakes, you know, felt like all these guys out there were just con artists. And I was just so frustrated. I felt like, man, they're just in it to make money and about their egos. And it was really, really discouraging. So I actually gave up for a couple of years. Um, but then I found another mentor that I trust. Um, you know, I continue to listen to books here and there, but I, I kind of like lost faith, especially because I put most of that $10,000 on a credit card. I had to pay it off. My wife trusted me. It was so frustrating. And I found another mentor and I paid $9,000 for the next mentor. I took another leap of faith, but within a month and a half, I did my first deal. So this mentor knew what he was talking about. Um, still love him to death. Tom Kroll, great friend of mine now. And, uh, but, I, but I still struggled to have real success, right? I, I, I told myself at that point, I'm going to walk away from window cleaner. I'm going to make this happen. Like this is, this is my goal. This is what I want to accomplish. But my main problem, my main struggle, and this is probably 99% of the people trying to get into this business is how do I consistently find properties, discounted properties, off market properties, so I can negotiate the price or I can negotiate the terms of the purchase, whether it's a seller finance deal or, or whatever it is. But if you can't first find deals, you can't be in business. Like you have no business if you have no leads, right? And so um, I started like dabbling and trying to figure out different ways to find 
discounted properties. Before, and, before you uh, go on, Zach, you mentioned something yeah, yeah. that is super important and I want to touch on that before you, so hold that thought for a second. So you yeah. paid 10 grand, this mentor basically didn't really have value. Then, you know, you kind of said, Hey, I'm going to give up, but then you came back, right? Why did that? Why did you do that? And then second question, how do you find a trusted, oh, sorry, a mentor that you can trust or a really good mentor? Right. Man, two great questions. So why did I not just give up? Man, that's such a good question. I don't know. I should have. $10,000 must have on a credit card. Like maybe I just glutton for punishment. I don't know. Like I wanted, I wanted it so bad though. Right. I mean, I'm who, just like who laughing in the background here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like who doesn't, who doesn't want a better life for their family? Who doesn't want financial freedom? Who doesn't want to, to be able to wake up and know that you're doing everything you can for your family? Like, I remember when my son was born, <clears throat> and it was the most beautiful day of my life. But I remember most of the time I was stressed about how I was going to pay for the medical bills. It doesn't have to be that way. It shouldn't be that way. Right? And it was up to me to change it. It wasn't up to the government. It wasn't up to anybody else but me. Right. And, and I think that my love for my family, my love for, for my children, my desire to provide the best life I could kept me, kept me going, kept me looking, kept me researching. And I found someone that, that I trusted. Um, and so that leads into the next question, right? How do you find someone that you can trust? Well, I think a lot of the times is, is what is their story? Right. Can you relate to what they've gone through? Can you relate to what you're doing? Um, I think there's a lot of mentors out there that, that teach a lot of fluff, right? They teach a lot of stuff and it's very scattered information and they throw so much information at their students that they're overwhelmed and they don't even know where to start because they don't give them a starting point. So what I would say to you, if you are new to real estate investing, if you've never done a deal and you're trying to get into wholesaling or fix and flip or, or buy and hold investing, whatever you're trying to do, you, find, you have to find a mentor that special, specializes in teaching how to find off-market discounted properties, right? Like that is their main focus for you as a student. Because if, if their goal is to get you leads, then, then they're going to help you get um, properties. And so I'm sure some people are like, okay, well, who's a great mentor? Who can I go to? Um, so this isn't necessarily why I'm here. I'm here to add value, but I do coach. I do help people find off-market discounted properties. I have students all across the nation that are, that are crushing it, right? That are finding discounted properties. That's what I focus on. Um, so, you know, I'm sure in the show notes here, there, there's going to be links to my social media and so forth. You guys can follow me and ask me any questions. I'm all about just adding value. Um, but yeah, I would, I would find someone that, that you trust, that you like their story. You can relate to who they are as a person, right? And you can smell the bull crap, right? Right. Well, I mean, you, you see people and you Absolutely. hear their story, you hear them talking about themselves and it's all about their ego, right? It's Absolutely. all about, it's all about their, 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 their need to feel significant and their need to like show off what they've accomplished instead of like, Hey, I'm a coach because I believe in giving back. I'm a coach because I want to get that person success. That's my mission, right? Yeah. Um, yep, so that, yep. That's probably how I'd answer that question. Kind of long winded. Hopefully, hopefully that gives some direction to people. No, I think that's absolutely fantastic. I think in that generation where, you know, I always say this all the time, but like social media, everybody just wants to show, show, show. But, you know, what about those days where you actually put in the hours and work hard? What about the days that you get kicked in the face because you just lost 10 grand on a mentor that didn't work and then you went right back in, you know, after you were kind of, you know, taking the back. What about those days? That's not a postable, um, you know, bit of your life on social media. Nobody's going to like that, you know, but, you know, when you now have the success, people think, oh, well, this guy's just lucky, but it really does that consistency and that effort to, to get you there. So I appreciate you sharing that. So you got to tell us, yeah, sorry, go on. No, you just said something that made me think that, you know, people, people want to see the authentic side of, of these people, right? Instead of just their Lambos and their fancy houses, which is just silly, right? Um, so I was actually, this happened a, a little while ago, um, but I was, I was in, up late one night and I was like, how can I, how can I show people that I care? How can I show people that I'm trying to truly help them? Like, 
and and then how do I help them? How do I how do I inspire them to take action through the the hard times? How do I get them to take their hard earned money and spend it on marketing? Like, how do I get these people to get results? Like that's what I was thinking, and I was it was like two in the morning. I couldn't sleep, and I have my notepad and I'm writing things down right. And I had this idea. So I'm actually going to do this. It's lined up to go this January. I was supposed to go last January, but COVID hit. The earthquake here in Utah hit, shut down our airports. Like it was a nightmare. And I was like, I'm just not, I'm not going to go because I don't know what the health risks are for my family. So I never did this, but I'm going this January. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take $1,000 and I'm going to turn it into $40,000 in 40 days. And I'm going to document the whole thing and I'm going to put it on YouTube. So people can see exactly what it takes to go from nothing in a whole new market with no experience in that market and turning it into a year salary in just 40 days doing what I teach. And so that's going to be all on my YouTube channel. So, so I'm, I'm constantly thinking like, how can I help these people? So, so yes, I will be documenting what it takes, the hours, the frustration, the struggles. That's all going to be available to you guys. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So now you're going to give us some of the secret sauce, at least some. How do you find this off-market discounted properties? If I'm a listener and I'm like, oh my God, dude, just tell me. Or like, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> right. Well, well how, let's, t- let's talk about the psychology, right? So, so when I first heard that people would sell their house at 50 cents on the dollar, I was like, Bull, boop, right? I was like, no way. That doesn't exist. Why would anyone sell their house for 50 cents on the dollar? And I learned this from my second mentor. He said that wholesaling is like having a pawn shop, but a pawn shop for houses. So, so people, they sell things to us pawn shop, not, not for any other reason than the convenience factor. They know that that pawn shop is going to turn around and make money on their stuff right? And there is a handful of people, actually much more than a handful. There is a lot of people, every single market that love the idea of convenience when selling their house. And so people all the time trade convenience for price, right? And so, so now the question is, how do you find those people that want convenience for price? Well, someone that has a property that they, that it's a, that it's a thorn in their side, right? That they want convenience. Like they've got a sibling, you know, they, let's say they inherit the property and they have a brother that's also a beneficiary, but he's a druggie. He's been living in the house, freeloading off mom and dad for the last 10 years. He's living there. He's going to, you're going to, he's going to have to deal with evicting him to be able to sell it. The house has meth. It has all these problems, right? And more than anything, it's this emotional problem too that he doesn't want to deal with. So an investor comes along and says, I'll take care of this thorn in your side. I'll get rid of it for you. I'll have you done in a matter of a few hours. You don't have to deal with eviction. You don't have to deal with any of these problems. I'll take care of it. That person is so grateful to not have to deal with it anymore, right? You removed a thorn in your side. So when someone, so, so you got to find those people that the house is a thorn in their side. So one of the main things that happens, if someone has a property that's a thorn in their side, they don't want to go fix the shingles that blew off. They don't want to go mow the lawn. They don't go fertilize. They don't pick the weeds. They don't, um, they don't fix the broken window. They put up a, you know, a piece of, uh, of plywood. They, they put, tarps on the roof instead of shingles. They do the bare minimum with this property. There's physical signs of neglect. There's an obvious sign that this property is not loved, right? But the neighbor's house is well kept and taken care of, and there's no way they'd sell it for speed and convenience. They're like you and I, where that property means something to them. They've worked hard for it. It, They want it. They love it, right? So what we do is we find, we literally drive around and look for those properties that have physical signs of neglect, and reach out and see if they want to sell. So, so it's called driving for dollars, right? And so it's, you drive around, you make dollars, right? It's a very simple process. You identify those properties and reach out to if they want to do it. And so what I do as a mentor is I help people learn how to put this system in place and produce leads. And then also I mentor my students on once you produce these leads, how do you make money with them? So the very first 12 months of starting driving for dollars, we did uh, just shy of a half a million dollars in wholesale fees, meaning we didn't, I didn't have the money to close on, you know, 50 deals or whatever it was. I think we did like 20 something deals that first year. I, I didn't have the money to close on those. And so what I did is I had a contract that was assignable. So I was able to sell the rights to close on the house before I ever even closed on it. So I made just shy of a half a million dollars selling paper, right? Selling the purchase contracts. 
And, and I did that by driving for dollars the year after or the end of that year, I started coaching. And the reason I did, um, is so there's a, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole, but I created no, a large goal. Go, go right there. I'm, I'm, go, I'm, go. I'm, yeah, go right there. We're in there with you. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, hopefully you guys aren't bored with this content, but I had set a goal that next 12 months, I wanted to do a million dollars in income. And you got to realize only a few years before this, I was a window cleaner doing a half a million dollars was like, how did I do that? Like I did not consider myself someone intelligent or special and like being able to make that kind of money. I was like, wow, like that, that, that was hard, but it wasn't r impossible. Like I, that was awesome. Right. Maybe I could do more. And so I set my goal even higher. I said, I want to do a million dollars in the next 12 months. And I've since learned that it's so important to have those goals because when you start to, to think towards something, there's a part of your brain that starts to notice opportunities, right? It's, it's like, uh, here's an example. Let's say, let's say you start researching a, a particular car. Maybe you think like, hey, I want to buy a Ford F-150 2015, like the eco and then, boost, and whatever. Then you, start, like, you start seeing the Ford F-150 everywhere you go. You see it. Right. And was that, was that Ford F-150 not there the whole time? Was it not all around you? Yes. But you start to notice it because there's a part of your brain that says, Hey, all of this information is filtered through that section of your brain. And that part of your brain will say, Hey, subconscious, this is important to Zach's conscious brain. Let's push that. Let's have him notice that. And so when you say, I want to do a million dollars, you're going to notice opportunities get you there. Right. And so I was, I set that goal and a good friend of mine, Matt, he said, Hey, I'm going to do a self-help journal called living your best year ever. It's all about creating three big goals and how to accomplish them. And we hold each other accountable. I said, sweet. That's awesome. I've got one big goal already. Let's do this thing. So we started doing the journal and in that first hundred pages, it talks about giving away whatever you want to receive. And so I wanted to make a million dollars that next year. So I had to give away a million dollars, dude. I didn't have a million dollars. I didn't have it but I wanted to take it seriously. I said, oh, how do I give away a million dollars? And, and, and also morally, I don't believe giving people money for nothing will really add value. I wanted to truly add value. So I, like I was, it was one of those things is up at night thinking, thinking, thinking. And the idea came, well, why don't you teach other people how to find discounted properties? That's what you got good at. Just teach what you just learned. Like what an awesome way to put a million dollars in other people's business. So I just called up a bunch of people that I knew from other, you know, groups and, and other co-students of programs I had been a part of and started teaching it. And then my students just started raking in money. One of my students made $113,000 profit on his first deal. In his first week, he, he quit his job. Like, and you can see all these successful stories in my YouTube channel as well. I interviewed all these people and, and it was the most fulfilling thing ever. And yes, I hit my goal. I hit $1.2 million that year. But more than anything, I helped my students. And my students were making a ton of money and it opened up doors and they started asking me questions that I hadn't thought of. And it started making me better at being an investor, right? Because the more you, the more you give, the more you receive. It's just a universal law. And, and it just really opened up my eyes. And, and more than anything, I found something that I would do every day for free because I love it that much, right? It, which is helping other people have financial freedom. Yeah, I mean the the secret of success is in giving, right? So yeah, I I totally can, yeah totally can relate to that. I do want to kind of just go back actually to one thing. I mean, what is so you've kind of you know you got started like, but what would you say is the common mistakes that a real estate investor you know kind of makes when they're trying to get into real estate? Because they you know like we've talked about a lot of great things today, but what about those in the beginning phase? Like they're listening to you. And then they want to jump in, but what, what do you think is kind of the mistakes that they could make or what could be holding them back? Yeah, I actually just created a YouTube video on this and it's, um, and I, I really feel like I have good insight here because I also coach a lot of newbie investors. I do a one-on-one -on -one or, or a group coaching call every Wednesday and I'm like deep diving their problems and I'm helping people start from nothing, like from stay at home moms to to actual successful entrepreneurs. I'm helping them get started in this business. And the number one thing I see is they're so worried about everything other than finding discounted properties. 
right? They, they like, oh, I heard about this guy and he teaches subject to financing, which is this creative seller financing structure. And I learned about this guy and he, he teaches wholesaling and he teaches how to sell contracts before you ever close on them. And this guy teaches flipping and this guy teaches uh, astro flipping and this guy teaches, um, you know, higher and better use. And this guy teaches this and this guy teaches this. And they're like, holy shit, there's so much to learn. I know nothing. And they're so overwhelmed with information but all of those things that I just said, all of those strategies mean absolutely nothing if you don't have leads. So what I tell my students, take all of that information out of your head, forget about it, right? Focus on finding a seller that has a thorn in their side and learn how to remove it, learn how to help them. And so like a student the other day, he's like, hey, Zach, well, what if I find a lead and the seller owes more than the house is worth and I can't give a cash offer to do a wholesale deal? Then what do I do? I said, do you have that situation? No, but I'm, what, what if I do? It's like, see, that's the problem. That's the problem. Everyone wants to know everything before they do anything, right? So the number one problem is, is first starting on finding discounted properties. And that's what I teach. That's what I help my students do. And then once they have a lead, then I help them walk through the process. So I have a student, I have a student right now, amazing guy. We're, um, I'm actually going to have a series of videos coming out with me, him, me and him one-on-one -on -one coaching through this process. He's got a, a million dollar deal on the table right now in his first week of being a student. So he found a lead and it was like this 30, 30 acre development project on by chance. Right. And, um, he's like, what do I do with it? I was like, okay, well, let's, you got the lead. Now let's figure out how to do developments. And then you get to learn developments. Right. But I've done deals. I've done all sorts of strategies. I've done subject to, I've done lease options. I've done seller finance. I've done, you know, different buy and hold structures. I've done, um, wholesaling a ton. I flipped houses. I partnered with flippers. I've done higher and better use on stuff where I've done, you know, closed on the property, tore down part of the building, did a lot line adjustment, turned it into two different tax IDs. Like I've done all sorts of crazy stuff. I've done firehouse damage properties. I mean, I've made millions of dollars in real estate, but none of that would have happened if I didn't have a seller that says, Hey, I have a problem property. Can you help me? And then I had to learn how to solve the problem. And that's when you gain real experience and real knowledge is actually doing it. But, in, and so instead of being focused on all of the things that you need to know, once you find a deal, focus on finding the deal. That's it. I love that's it. That's the I number one problem. I love it. That is such a good, a good way to kind of go into the, the quick round. So we definitely, definitely dwell into the quick rounds. These are going to be quick questions, quick answers. You ready, sir? Yep. All right. First question. What makes you, Zach, unique? What is that differentiating factor that separates you from the next guy or from the next girl? Uh, I try and add value to everyone I come in contact with. I love it. Next question. What was the last book that you read? What was the one thing you picked up from that book? Um, I am currently reading, well, last book. Um, I read uh, Tony Robbins, Unleash the, the Power Within. Um, man. Yeah. What are you reading now? Actually? Great book, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm reading crush it. Gary V. So yeah, Gary V good book. And so I'm reading that for, uh, for my coaching business and the most recent golden nugget that I got that I actually shared on my team meeting this morning is, um, he talks about like when someone starts a company, they think, well, I'm going to do organic Mac and cheese, but that, that company becomes, you know, uh, organic uh cheese crackers and organic comfort foods ultimately becomes the brand and you know i started off as a mentor teaching people how to find off market discounted properties teaching people how to get started in real estate investing and i love it and i'll continue to have that um but ultimately i would love it to be i want to help people be successful financially people to not have the burdens financially that i had when i started right like i want you to have your kid and just enjoy the moment and not be struggling so I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, final question. What do you do for fun? Oh, I spend so much time in the mountains. I love the Western United States because of the mountains. I'm always all over the mountains and, uh, yeah, every, every chance I get, I, that's what I'm doing. So that's one of the blessings of being an entrepreneur. I love it. I love it. The outdoors. If there's somebody on this, you know, listening to our conversation thinking, wow, I really like this Zach guy. I want to reach out to Zach. What's the best way people can reach out and get to know you better? Yeah. So I have, I have every platform possible, I think. <laughs> so I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, 
uh, you can follow me there. I, I, I assume you'll have that in your show notes, correct? Correct. Got awesome. So they can follow me on those social media platforms. You can send me a private message through there if you want to, if you want to jump on a call or talk to me. Uh, you can also follow my YouTube channel, which has a ton of value and content there. Um, so, yeah, just any social media platform. Awesome, Zach, you're a legend. Appreciate it. I really learned a ton myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to to speak with you. It's been fun. <laughs>